Last night, the pitchers took control. Tony Armas Jr., a masterful seven innings of work. Blue Jays ace Roy Halladay, equally brilliant, until Fernando Tatis tattooed a game-winning shot. It's a glorious holiday weekend in Toronto. The roof will be open for the middle game of a three-game series between the old Pearson Cup rivals, the Expos and the Blue Jays. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a brand new season of Rogers Blue Jays baseball on CBC. Chris Cuthbert sitting in for Brian Williams, who's wrapping up his World Cup coverage this weekend. John Cerruti has been with the ball club for all of the first half, a trying one, and the Blue Jays finding things difficult against the Expos, too, even when they get a great performance from their ace, Roy Halladay. Roy Halladay has pitched well all year, Chris, as you know. The Blue Jays started very poorly pitching in the month of April, but they had a lot of injuries. They had a lot of rookies making their Major League debut. They've turned that around since the middle of May. They've pitched very well. The problem is, in the last couple of weeks, they haven't hit the ball as well. They're not taking advantage of scoring opportunities. You see, they've won just four of their last 15 ball games. They averaged 243 but they're not scoring a lot of runs in scoring position. They're batting just 194, and if you throw out that 20-run outburst they had in Tampa Bay earlier this week, they're batting just 164 with runners in scoring position. Two errors last night, but it was one mental mistake that may have cost them the ball game. This is a young and an inexperienced ball club at, at a few positions. They expect the errors, but it's these types of mistakes that they've been making. Ken Huckabee yelled three. Roy Halladay tried to get the runner Cabrera at third. They weren't able to get an out. They should have just taken the out at first base. He ended up scoring at that time, tying the game at one. And then the Tatis homer was the difference in the game. But that's that's going to happen. Ken Huckabee has done a great job. It was a mistake on his part. Roy Halladay has been outstanding. But the Blue Jays are learning. And J.P. Ricciardi, their general manager, has said they just want to improve in the small areas, the fundamental areas of the game by September. Toronto's lost the 11 of 15 on the flip side. The Expos with 11 wins in their last 14 games. There's optimism in Montreal. It's a good young team, a very exciting team. And now they've added Bartolo Colon to round out a very good pitching staff. I mean, they match up pretty well with the Atlanta Braves. They've been playing well. They've been winning. The problem is the Atlanta Braves have been winning as well. They haven't been able to make up any ground. But as one Expos coach pointed out, they haven't lost any ground either. Colon will pitch Tuesday in Atlanta. We will see two right-handers this afternoon for the Expos. Masato. Yoshi, he has not won a game since mid-April. Pete Walker, 3 and O's. These are the fifth starters for their respective ball clubs. So Yoshi and Walker are set. It's the Expos and Blue Jays on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Toronto. Your company shares a single pool of minutes, so there's less unused airtime, fewer extra charges. It's a whole new business day from Rogers AT&T. Imagine. Wake up to CBC News Sunday. What we're trying to do is make it more personal for people. Singing and dancing is just my job, and is there a place for that after September 11th? We have the ability to add a dimension to the author's story. We have a chance to really examine the world on a deeper level. Media, politics, spirituality, ethics, accountability are what we want to address in this show. CBC News Sundays, tomorrow morning on most CBC stations. This summer chisels with Music Works. Sparks fly as some of Canada's hottest bands perform in our music warehouse. Give these people be Jay Englishman. Jack Soul, McMaster and James, Soul Decision. Join host Pat Mastriani and feel the heat this summer on Music Work, Monday at 5.30 on CBC. Fifth meeting of the year between these Canadian rivals. The Expos have won the first four games and going back to last season, it's five in a row for the Expos over the Blue Jays as we get set for this afternoon tilt at Skydome. 
Expos with a 12 and 4 interleague record. It's one of the best in the majors. And here's their starting lineup. Same as last night in that 2 1 victory, with one exception. Michael Barrett will be behind the plate catching and in the nine spot in the order in place of Brian Schneider. And for the Blue Jays, it's the same defense as we saw last night. Cruz Wells and Mondesi in the outfield. Dave Berg, another start at second base. And Huckabee catching Pete Walker, who's done a nice job for the Blue Jays this year. He really has, Chris. He's pitched well as a starter. He's pitched well in relief. This is his fourth start of the season, his fourth career start. Made his first start earlier this year for the Blue Jays as a 33-year-old. He has been a nice find for the Toronto Blue Jays. Four start for Walker. All have been at home in the first delivery to Brad Wilkerson's in for a strike. Wilkerson having a very good year for the Expos. Just inserted in that leadoff role back in May. And he's put up some big numbers. He leads National League rookies in several categories. Walker getting ahead of Wilkerson early here. And one and two. Wilkerson six for 16 against the Blue Jays, even with an 0 for 4 last night. Now both starters last night, Halliday for the Blue Jays and Armas for the Expos pitched very well, and they shut down the early part of the orders. Pitch on the ground, Delgado spoils to make the play, and Walker at first to record the out. What an outstanding play by Carlos Delgado. Getting to that ball and then giving Walker a good feed as he covered first base. Here's a scouting report on Pete Walker. He has a low 90s fastball, mostly a sinking fastball, so a lot of movement down in the strike zone. He has a hard slider and a splitter that he's just developed this year, cooking at home because he has pitched very well here at Skydome. 2 0 with a 2.40 ERA as a starter and even lower ERA overall. He'll face the center fielder, Jose Macias who was 0 for 4 last night. He reached once on an error, was caught stealing, and also drove in one of the two Expo runs in a well-pitched game. Just seven hits in the ball game, four for the Expos and three for the Blue Jays, and it was a fast-paced game at two hours and 18 minutes. The start that Halliday would take every time out. That's what Halliday did last night. He threw strikes, and that's what Walker has done here in the early going. I spoke with Roy earlier in the Blue Jays clubhouse, and he said, yeah, it's just a tough. He gave up that home run to Tatis. He was on a good pitch, a breaking ball. I said, I'm sure you'll take the, those numbers and that type of stuff every time out. He said, yes, absolutely. He's going to win the majority of those games. Wouldn't get any argument from Jose Vidro or Vlad Guerrero, who was shut down last night. In fact, it's hard to imagine, John, that the Blue Jays have yet to beat Montreal this year, and they really have held the big two in check. Yes, Vidro and Guerrero have not hurt the Blue Jays as much as Tatis. Even Lee Stevens, he had a big series back in Montreal a couple of weeks ago. Let's see what they've done, these two. And those are well below their season averages. But they still, there's still two games, and believe me, the Blue Jays are not taking them for granted. They pay very much attention to them at the plate, both Vidro and Guerrero. They've done a nice job of shutting them down. Pedro hits the 3 1 in the air to right field, and it's a 1 2 3 first inning for Pete Walker. Blue Jays come to the plate in the first. We're scoreless at Skydome. If you're noticing that people are dressing better, client meeting? No. It might be because our summer sale is now in progress, which means you can get a great looking suit for 130. 
a sport coat for a hundred. And if you're looking for ties, shirts, or slacks, they're also at big savings. So come on in. While you might not be the first in your office, it's probably best <coughs> not to be the last. Well made, well priced, well dressed. Moors. Because the world still spins on the weekend, CBC News brings you continuing coverage of what's going on internationally and here at home. Sunday Report with Allison Smith. Stay tuned for Venture. Then, the latest from the world of business. Good evening, I'm Diane Buckner. Welcome to Venture. And we never know whether or not we're going to be working or not working. And we see opportunity and we're out to capture it. This will be a ghost town. It all starts at 10, Sunday nights on CBC Television. Canada, 135 years young. Party with the CBC from the gala stage, high on Parliament Hill. Followed by a cross-country celebration with celebrity hosts and special guests. From Charlottetown, the birthplace of Canada. Celebrate Canada Day into the night, starting at 8, Monday night on CBC Television. Brought to you in part by the Chicken Farmers of Canada. For the first time under the guidance of Carlos Tosca, the Blue Jays are under 500 with three consecutive losses, including last night's defeat. Here's who the manager has sent out today. The one change from last night, the designated hitter will be Darren Fletcher, the former Expo instead of Tom Wilson. Defensively for the Expos, the one change comes behind the plate. Michael Barrett back to catch Masato Yoshi, Wilkerson, Macias, Guerrero. The outfield to Tease Cabrera, Fidro, and the big cat at first base. And there is Masato Yoshi. He's making his seventh start today in his 18th appearance for the Expos this season, facing the Blue Jays for the first time. A veteran pitcher, 17 years of professional baseball between Japan and the major leagues. to lead things off. Again, Shannon Stewart not in the Blue Jays lineup. The hamstring twinge that they're going to give a second day of rest to. Well, they did it earlier with Shannon Stewart, especially playing on artificial surface here at Sky Dome. A little more cautious with him after tomorrow's ball game. The Blue Jays head out to Boston for five games in four days. And hoping to get Shannon Stewart back in the lineup then. We also have Chris Woodward bothered by a groin problem, so he hasn't been able to play in a week. What? The breaking ball strike from Yoshi. Woodward was the most dangerous hitter for the Blue Jays in Montreal a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I spoke to Chris Woodward around the batting cage today, and he's very disappointed. He's very anxious to get back in the lineup. The Blue Jays want to give him playing time. Well, Yoshi is not an overpowering pitcher. He's a control pitcher. He'll mix his speeds, throw four different types of pitches. Here's the 2-2 off of the Cruz outside. 3-2 to Jose Cruz Jr., who really tore up Tampa Bay pitching. What a series he had there with 10 runs batted in, a couple of home runs, and... 0 for 4 last night in the series opener against Montreal. Down to Galarraga. Steps on the bag for the first down. The big cat, a former gold glover. And with Lee Stevens being traded to Cleveland, the big cat is going to see a little more playing time at first base. He's 22 home runs shy of 400 for his career. He'd like to attain that milestone. And he says all he has to do is get at bats. So Frank Robinson hoping to give him at bats, but of course he has to produce offensively. Here's Eric Kinski taking the first pitch. High and in tight. Kinski one for three last night. He had the lone Blue Jays RBI. Another base hit for the fine Blue Jay rookie, and that ball almost bounded over the head of Macias in center. The first hit of the game goes to the Blue Jays' third baseman, Eric Hinsky. Similar to the hit that he had 
did last night, picking up that first run of the ball game in the fifth inning. Although this one sounded like it might have broken his bat, but he found a place in the carpet. And you're right. You see Macias leaping high to keep that ball from going back to the warning track or the wall and giving Hinsky extra bases. The Expos have to realize during day games, this carpet heats up a little bit and the ball will bounce higher when it hits the surface. Something they don't have a, to worry about at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Hinsky with five stolen bases. Marcy steps in. 0 for 4 last night with a couple of strikeouts. It was a tough night for the heart of the Blue Jays' order. Yeah, the first four batters in the Blue Jay order went one for 14, and if you include the next three, the first seven went one for 24. So credit Tony Armas Jr. with an outstanding pitch ball game. Odyssey rips that down the left field line. He rows into the seats and a fine catch. Montreal fans in that section. You see the career numbers for Raul against Montreal, and most of those at-bats, of course, was when he was a member of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Six years he played with the Dodgers. Good numbers against the Expos, but 0 for 9, lifetime against Yoshi. It'll be 0 for 10 as they turn the double play. Good defense by the Expos. And a quick first inning for Masato Yoshi. Scoreless after one in Toronto. Celebrate the Queen's Golden Jubilee with a personal look at a woman whose birthright was to be queen. The death of her father had a huge impact on her. Because suddenly, she was queen. She had so much to do, so much to learn. Then, from nervous young man to proud father to humiliated ex-husband, the trials of Charles, king in waiting. Make it a royal evening. Tuesday, beginning at 8 on CBC. Next week on CBC Sports Saturday. At noon, Women Warriors profiles Canada's Haley Wickenheiser. She's solid gold. Then it's Sports Journal at 12.30. People don't understand what it takes to be an athlete. It's huge. Athletics. Oslo Golden League is on track at 1 Eastern. Followed at 2.30 by Atco Power Queen Elizabeth II Cup from Spruce Meadows. CBC Sports Saturday. Coverage begins next week at noon Eastern. The World Cup. It brings you up. It takes you down. Filmmaker Peter Lynch takes an intimate look at Toronto's multicultural soccer cultures in Soccer Fever, a passion play, Wednesday at 7 on CBC. Nine Jets, wing to wing, a 360-degree inside loop at 4Gs, 1,800 seconds. All right, one more round. Chasing Canada Snowbirds, Monday at 7 on CBC Television. Jose Vidro made a very nice turn on that double play ball to end the bottom of the first inning. Raul Montesi is a tough man to double up. Yoshi makes a nice play to his right, gives Vidro a nice feed. You see the nice turn, the nice pivot by the second baseman right there. And Vlad Guerrero will lead things off with the Expos in the second. Had a 20-game hit streak, third longest in the National League. In last night, hit the ball hard a couple of times. And hits this high in the air to deep center field. And that ball is gone. Home run for Vladimir Guerrero. Number 18 on the year. Aggressive hitters in all of baseball. He loves to jump on the first pitch. Here he gets a 1-0 pitch up out over the plate. And boy, he gives it a ride. Look at the extension in his arms. Walker knew. Frank Robinson, the Expos manager, has said he has never seen a player hit the ball as hard as Vladimir Guerrero. This 
this back. When you watch him take batting practice, and you stand around the cage, the ball makes a different sound when it hits the bat. It just jumps off the bat, but it almost sounds like a rifle. See that ball actually hit off the facing and he came back onto the field. snap last night and Guerrero looks like he's going to begin another one today. Well, they had held Pedro and Guerrero in check. <laughs> that didn't last very long today. Well, Leary fights another one back and the count remains one and two. And, and we're talking about that hitting streak of Vladimir Guerrero. You know, he's had a 30-gamer and now a 20-gamer in his career. Not too many players have done that in their career. In fact, there's only 17 in Major League history to have two separate streaks of 20 games and 30 games. And it's a Hall of Fame collection. You're not kidding. He had a 31-game hitting streak back in 1999. The other active players to have that combo, Garcia Parra, Luis Castillo down in Florida, and Luis Gonzalez, the Arizona Diamondback. Called strikeout, and Walker retires Troy O'Leary. First strikeout of the afternoon. I got him looking on a good fastball right on the outside edge. The ball's not down, but it's right on an outside corner. Look at Darren Fletcher just frame that pitch. And they get the call from the home plate umpire, Bill Welke. Good call, too, by the umpire. Let me check that. Ken Huckabee behind the plate. And there's a base hit for Fernando Tatis, the hero last night. This ball will go to the wall. And Tatis will cruise into second with a double. And Tatis continues to hit the Blue Jays hard with seven runs batted in in his first four games against the Blue Jays this season. And a double here in the second. Ball well, in the middle part of the plate. He's hit right on the line the other way. And he is one of the players in that Expos lineup that is starting to pick it up by getting a little more balance, a little more production throughout the lineup now. It's not just Vidro and Guerrero like it was the first couple of months of the season. Tatis warming up, so is Cabrera. And what? see Andres Calaraga keyed up too now that he will get some regular time in the lineup. This is sixth consecutive start. Former National League batting champion. Chase that pitch and falls behind Walker one and two, who has surrendered a leadoff home run to Vladimir Guerrero. And a one-out double to Fernando Tatis here in the second. And call strike three. Second strikeout of the inning for Walker. Another one on that side of the plate. Huckabee set up inside corner, and Walker delivered it. Walker has had very good command of his pitches since joining the Blue Jays, getting a chance to pitch regularly, for the, really for the first time in the major leagues in his career. So two out, runner at second. Here is the shortstop, Orlando Cabrera. We mentioned that he is starting to heat up. Nine for his last 15 in what has been a disappointing first half of the season for last year's Expos MVP. And now that Cabrera is swinging the bat better, Fernando Tatis, Lee Stevens was swinging the bat well, as I said earlier, before he was traded to Cleveland. It takes pressure off of Vidro and Guerrero in the middle part of that order. 
and also makes opposing pitchers pitch to Guerrero a little bit more. He's going to have more men on base. What? He's going to have a little produ production behind him, a little protection behind him. Well, those numbers for Cabrera, not in the same league as last year when he drove in 96. Not bad when your shortstop is up and drives in 96. And now the count evens at two and two. Yeah, he won the gold glove playing at the big O with that carpeting. Now they've replaced the surface this year. It's, a, it's better, much better. But the old carpeting had a lot of seams in it, a lot of ripples, and a very hard surface. And it is amazing that he won the gold glove. Played very well. Walker's 2-2 outside. Count runs full. With Michael Barrett, the catcher, due up next. Puts it away, but a leadoff home run for Vladimir Guerrero, number 18 on the year, has put the Expos on top here in Toronto. Come to lovers' paradise. Hold hands, skip along the beach, get in touch with love. You call that a trip? The ultimate Bud World Experience. Well, that's a trip. Find the winning Ultimate Bud World Experience Passport in specially marked cases of Budweiser, and you and three buddies are off to three of these unbelievable sporting weekends. You must be at least 21 years of age, no purchase necessary. This summer drizzles with Music Works. Sparks Fly as some of Canada's hottest bands perform in our music warehouse. Give these people a beat. Jay Englishman. Jack Soul. McMaster and James. Soul Decision. Join host Pat Mastriani and feel the heat this summer on Music Works, Monday at 5.30 on CBC. They're big. They're battling. And they're back on CBC. Expos, Jays, tomorrow at 1 Eastern on CBC's Rogers Blue Jays Baseball. The World Cup, it brings you up. It takes you down. Filmmaker Peter Lynch takes an intimate look at Toronto's multicultural soccer cultures in Soccer Fever, a passion play, Wednesday at 7 on CBC. There's the newest member of the Montreal Expos, Bartolo Colon, just acquired late Thursday night from the Cleveland Indians. And he is a good one. He is a legitimate number one starter. Joined the ball club today. They had a brief press conference. There he rejoined his pitching coach in Cleveland, Dick Pohl, now the pitching coach here in Montreal, or for the Montreal Expos. Said hello to his new teammates. And boy, are they happy to see him and have him aboard at the front of that rotation. Well, Frank Robinson uh, at a press conference at 2 o'clock this afternoon said he now feels his pitching staff matches up with any in baseball with Bartolo Colon, their new ace, coming over from the American League. And uh, Delgado fly ball, first pitch. And Cabrera back to retired Delgado. But he was 9-2 and two in his last four years against National League teams in interleague play, so he may have an edge coming over. Well, he's going to have an edge anyway because they don't know him as well. Hey, you he go. will pitch Tuesday okay. in Atlanta. The Braves will host the Expos for a three-game series, and then the Expos will host the Braves for four games coming out of the All-Star break. Here's Darren Fletcher. Wait. I think it's a great move for Omar Manaya, the general manager, and the Expos. Really sends a message to the league, to the players, and to the fans of Montreal that they're trying to win now. And that's the first time that message has really been delivered in a number of years in Montreal. It's going to be interesting to see 
what kind of fan reaction they get when they go back home after the All-Star break and they start with Atlanta. Right, they're on a long road trip right now. Fletcher out. Hopper, Cabrera, anticipating the big hop, makes the defensive play. Two down. He didn't need to jump, but he was ready to just in case. High chopper off the bat of Fletcher. He knew he had plenty of time with Fletcher running. Good sinking fastball from Yoshi. These players are paying attention because that ball bounced high in the first inning on the single by Hinsky in right center field. So they know this turf is a little spongier than it was last night in the night ball game. Here's Vernon Wells, who had a 13 game hit streak. And in Tampa, 0 for 8 since. His best tear as a major leaguer. Check swing foul. And Yoshi has been very economical with his pitches so far. Just 11 in the first inning. And two outs on six pitches so far in the second. She has not allowed a run in his last two starts over eight and a third. One of those starts abbreviated when he was knocked out of the game. A comebacker off the bat of Randall Simon caught him up on the right shoulder in the neck area. And it was a frightening moment in that game. It really was. It was scary just to watch it. That happened on June 11th in Detroit. is full. Happened in the fourth inning, so he, he pitched just three and a third in that ball game. It's a breaking ball that just stays up, really slipped out of the hand of Yoshi, bending Wells back. Two out, full count, and that ball will flare into right. Galarag is not going to get it, but it just bounds foul. A couple of feet on the foul side of the first base line. from a, an extra base hit for Vernon Wells. Well, there was a day that Andres Galarraga may have made that play. He's not a quick, as quick, not the quick caddy he once was. He winning a gold glove, gold, former gold glove winner at first base. He's lost a step or two, but still very reliable on balls that are hit to him. Very soft hands, dig, digs the ball out of the dirt well on low throws from his infielders. Side pitch turned on, fouled up into the upper deck. In Montreal, Vernon Wells had a pair of home runs. One off tomorrow starter, Toma Oka. Another three to offering and another foul. You look at the National League and the pitching around the league, there are very good pitchers and there are a lot of good teams with good staffs. And you immediately think of the New York Mets, the Atlanta Braves, and the Los Angeles Dodgers. But I think with Bartolo Colon moving at the front of their rotation and the young pitchers they have in that rotation, this is a very formidable staff. And a very balanced bullpen. They have three left-handers in the bullpen. They don't have a clear-cut closer right now, although the way Scott Stewart has been pitching, he notched his ninth save last night. He looks like the closer right now. But they feel that they can go in, into the second half staying in the race, not only in the National League East, but in the wild card. Aloka has been a pleasant surprise for them. We saw how good Armas could be last night. And Vernon Wells with a good at bat to draw the two-out walk. Yes, he really battled Yoshi in that at bat, fouled off several pitches, a lot of off-speed pitches, softer pitches from the right-hander. 
work the walk. So a two-out walk to Wells will bring up the switch hitter, Felipe Lopez. He batted eighth in the lineup last night, moving into the number seven spot in this ballgame. And the only extra base hit for the Blue Jays last night, a triple. And scored on the two-out RBI single by Hinsky. I mentioned the first seven batters in the order for the Blue Jays were one for 24 against Tony Armas Jr. last night. Well, Lopez had the triple batting eighth in the order, and Ken Huckabee had a single his first time up. He was a ninth hitter last night, as he is today. Yoshi holding Wells close. Four stolen bases for Vernon Wells on the year. just three hits in last night's game. The Expos only managed four hits, seven hits in a ball game. That's unheard of these days. In fact, it's the first time that the Expos have managed just four hits and won a road ball game. We've only done it twice this season. They've only done it once. Managed a road game victory with just four hits or fewer. Lopez, that's a strike. I thought it was just the law of averages last night after the 20 to 11 deal in Tampa Bay earlier in the week. Yeah, boy, the Blue Jays jumped all over the Tampa Bay Devil Rays on Tuesday night. Then they came back and lost the next two ball games, a couple games they could have won. Got a pretty good pitching performance on Thursday afternoon from Chris Carpenter, and the bullpen squandered the lead. So in those last 15 games, it's been a little bit of everything for the Blue Jays. They lacked the timely hitting. Their defense has let them down, and their bullpen, a couple of ball games, has not pitched well. Yoshi showing a lot of respect for Vernon Wells. Four or five times he's gone over to first. With two out here in the Blue Jays second. Down by a run, and that ball hit to Cabrera. And he'll throw on to first, seeing he couldn't beat Wells to second, but the side is retired, stranding the two-out walk to Vernon Wells. One-nothing Expos here at Skydome. Without a cause, followed by East of Eden tonight at 10 on CBC. CBC News, The National with Peter Mansbridge. Weeknights at 10. What's that, Canada? Canada, 135 years young. Party with the CBC from the gala stage, high on Parliament Hill. Followed by a cross-country celebration with celebrity hosts and special guests. From Charlottetown, the birthplace of Canada. Celebrate Canada Day into the night, starting at 8, Monday night on CBC Television. Brought to you in part by Via Rail. Next week on CBC Sports Saturday. At noon, Women Warriors profiles Canada's Haley Wickenheiser. She's solid gold. Then it's Sports Journal at 12.30. People don't understand what it takes to be an athlete. It's huge. Athletics. Oslo Golden League is on track at 1 Eastern. Followed at 2.30 by ATCO Power Queen Elizabeth II Cup from Spruce Meadows. CBC Sports Saturday. Coverage begins next week at noon Eastern.
Well, if you missed it this morning, tonight at 7 o'clock local, CBC Sports is a rebroadcast of today's third place game between Turkey and Korea. And set the alarm for tomorrow, 6.30 Eastern time, the World Cup final. Ronaldo in Brazil against Germany. And that should be quite a match tomorrow. Join Brian Williams, Bob Leonarduzzi, and Jason DeBoss in studio for all the action. Top of the third, bottom of the Expos quarter, the ninth man, Michael Barrett, with a comeback here to Pete Walker for the first out. Pete Walker is a very good athlete. Fields his position well, has a good move to first base, does the little things well to help himself as a pitcher. And most importantly, he's pitched well for the Toronto Blue Jays, although he's trails here early, 1-0. Back to the top of the order, Brad Wilkerson, who has hit 315 in the leadoff position. He mentioned uh, taking over that spot in late May, May 29th, and uh, he seems to have embraced the role. What? Well, the Blue Jays let, or excuse me, the Expos let Peter Bergeron go, knowing that they had this young man, Wilkerson. And Bergeron is a, is a very fine center fielder, very speedy, covers a lot of ground, but they want a little more offense. And now Wilkerson has moved to left field. Jose Macias was picked up in a trade from the Detroit Tigers, so he has been inserted in center. Wilkerson was playing center field. He slides over to left, and he's been, been providing a valuable bat as a corner outfielder. That misses high, two and two. Wilkerson with a solo home run off Pete Walker when they faced each other on June 14th. Walker gets the best of him this time. And that's the third strikeout of the game for the Blue Jays starter. Got him on a high slider. Ball stays up a little bit, but it has a sharp break just above the belt. Watch Wilkerson swing right under that. A lot of times hitters will anticipate that break. They see the rotation of the slider, and they expect that ball to break a little bit more down. Stays above their back. Here's Jose Macias, the center fielder. Grounded out to second, first time up. Hitting 319 in June. What? Macias acquired from the Detroit Tigers earlier this season for Chris Truby. several positions the last few years. He's played in the infield. He's played all three outfield positions. Switch hitter with some speed. Turned on that ball. And that ball lined into the right field for a home run. And the second homer surrendered by Pete Walker. Pitch to Wilkerson up, a high slider. He left this ball up to Jose Macias, and he pulled it into that right field bullpen. See, so look at the location. That's above the belt, another slider. This one more of a spinner. Nice short stroke from Macias. Boy, very compact swing. And he just hits that line drive into that bullpen. Was on top, 2 nothing now. That's heating up. He had a two run homer in the finale of the Pittsburgh series on Thursday. So, two home runs in the last three games. His third is an expo. Turning out to be another fine acquisition by the general manager, Omar Manaya. So, three hits in the game for the expos, but two have been the long ball. First, Guerrero, now Macias. as Walker gives up his fourth and fifth home runs of the year. Oh, so that's a better location on that last pitch. 
Pete Walker needs to stay down in the strike zone. Get a little more tilt on that breaking ball. Oh, there's a good changeup. And Vidor out in front. Vidro was two for two when he faced Walker. Series two weeks ago, but Walker strikes him out. Two strikeouts in the inning, four in the game for Pete Walker. However, the Expos have gone long twice. First Guerrero, and now Macias, and it's 2-0 Montreal. Two Canada Day coin. Our new 25 cent coin from the Royal Canadian Mint. Designed by Judith Chartier. From Quebec. For sure. Look for it. Collect it. Celebrate it. It's a gift for all of Canada. Yeah. Oh boy, birthday cake. Where's the cake? Huh. <laughs> Was there cake? Celebrate the Queen's Golden Jubilee with a personal look at a woman whose birthright was to be queen. The death of her father had a huge impact on her. But suddenly, she was queen. She had so much to do, so much to learn. Then, from nervous young man to proud father to humiliated ex-husband, the trials of Charles, king in waiting. Make it a royal evening. Tuesday, beginning at 8 on CBC. You've waited four years, and now it's here. The FIFA World Cup Final. Brazil, Germany. Exclusive live coverage only on CBC Television and CBC Radio 1. Tomorrow morning at 6.30. The World Cup. It brings you up. It takes you down. Filmmaker Peter Lynch takes an intimate look at Toronto's multicultural soccer cultures in Soccer Fever, a passion play. Wednesday at 7 on CBC. Let's look at the scouting report for Masano Yoshi, the 37-year-old Japanese right-hander. He has a fastball about 88, 89 miles per hour. That's about the tops. A slider and a splitter also throw a straight change. He throws that split-fingered fastball a lot. He lacks stamina because he just doesn't pitch long into the ball game. Seems to run out of gas. What? And the third point on the scouting report, you can run on him. He doesn't do a good job of holding runners. Last year, Base runners were 13 for 13 in the stolen base department. From baseman Dave Bird leading off the Blue Jays third. They say that that lack of stamina is at least in part the way the Japanese handle their starting pitchers. Yeah, they, they actually give them more days in between starts, some five, sometimes six days of rest. And he was more accustomed to that, having pitched in Japan for so long. To Tatis, that trademark submarine throw across the diamond for the first out. Yoshi came to the major leagues here in North America back in 1998 when the New York Mets signed him. So he's been pitching here, he pitched a couple years with the Mets. And with the Colorado Rockies, there's his pitching coach, Dick Pohl. Joined the Expos last year from the Rockies at midseason. There's Huckabee with a line shot caught by Wilkerson for the second out. Dick Pohl has done a nice job with this young staff. He loves working with these young pitchers. He's a former pitching coach of mine in the Boston organization a few years ago, actually 10 years ago now I think of it. And he's been around. He's, he's been with several organizations. He's a fine pitcher himself. He wanted me to say hello to his wife, Carol Lynn, watching back in Michigan, knowing, knowing that uh, they've been watching the CBC broadcast there in northern Michigan. Got a nice staff to work with, but got a whole lot better bolstered with the addition of Bartolo Colon. Two out. And the Blue Jay third, back to the top of the order for Jose Cruz, Jr. Blue Jays have to one hit, two base runners in the game. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for 
Masato Yoshi on just six pitches here in the third. This perfect day didn't start at the crack of dawn, nor with the first cast. No, this perfect day started a week ago in aisle 35 at Canadian Tire. This one works. Hey, Dad, what about this one? Yeah, I got a good feeling about this one. Funny how where you end up has a lot to do with where you start. Canadian Tire. Columbia Pictures presents Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones in Men in Black 2. Columbia Pictures and Rockport, the official shoe of Men in Black 2, are giving you a chance to win. Beginning June 10th, visit a participating retailer and fill in a ballot for a chance to win a trip for two to Hollywood. The lucky winner also receives $1,000 in Rockport merchandise, plus a Sony Handycam camcorder. Try on the Rockport Men in Black shoe at select Rockport retailers, and you could win free passes to see Men in Black 2. Opening July 3rd in theaters everywhere. If you're noticing that people are dressing better... Client meeting? No. It might be because our summer sale is now in progress, which means you can get a great-looking suit for $130, a sport coat for $100, and if you're looking for ties, shirts, or slacks, they're also at Big Savings. So, come on in. While you might not be the first in your office, it's probably best <coughs> not to be the last. Well-made, well-priced, well-dressed. Moors. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by Canadian Tire. Let's get started. Vladimir Guerrero will lead off the Expo fourth. He led off the second with a home run. Frank Robinson has said that Guerrero hasn't seen a pitch he didn't like, and he certainly liked that <laughs> offering in the second. If it's in the air, he likes it. If it's coming towards him, and it's in the air. Wraps that on the ground and hits me. Bends the cross, just beating Guerrero. He did, did just beat Guerrero. A little hesitation by Hinsky. And Guerrero really hustling down that line. But they got the out at first base. And again, first pitch swinging. He loves to jump on that first pitch. This is a breaking ball. He just rolls over, pulls it. I think Walker got away with that pitch because that ball stayed up middle part of the plate. A little hesitation there by Hinsky getting the grip on the baseball. Hinsky has really improved defensively. He's made an error last night, but that snapped a 22 consecutive game streak without an error. Error was on a sharply hit ball by Guerrero down the line. And there is O'Leary with a line drive into the glove of Jose Cruz Ju or Vernon Wells for the second out. Ball hit on the button by O'Leary, but it found the glove of Vernon Wells. O'Leary playing well for the Expos after coming over in the offseason from the Boston Red Sox. Kind of ran out of playing time with the Red Sox last year. Crowded outfield. And Manny Ramirez seemed to crowd him out of the Boston lineup. So here's Tatis, doubled first time up. Home run last night. The home run hit on a pitch that Holiday said probably was a ball, but Tatis was able to take it out. So Halliday tipped his cap to Tatis. Yeah, that's just what he said to me. He said that sometimes you tip your hat. Absolutely. To a good hitter when they hit a good pitch. That's something that Roy Halliday has done throughout the season is throw the breaking ball behind in the count. It was a 2-1 pitch. And it, the way Tatis hit it, it looked like he was looking for that pitch in that situation. And good hitters do that. They'll, they'll watch from the bench. They'll pay attention to patterns that pitchers are using throughout a game. Well, believe me, Roy Halliday will continue to throw that breaking ball in any situation, any counting against good hitters. 
You know, he, he did that. He threw some three two breaking balls last night. He got the Expos to chase. He threw some breaking balls behind one and oh, two and oh. I mean, that's his pattern. So credit to Tatis last night. Run and watching that pattern. Pretty good battle right now between Tatis and Walker. Tatis on a six game hit streak. Extended today with his first at bat. And a guy with legitimate power in 99 with the Cardinals, 34 home runs and 107 RBIs. Hit and it's called strike three. And the Expos are retired in the fourth, a one, two, three inning for Pete Walker. Wake up to CBC News Sunday. What we're trying to do is make it more personal for people. Singing and dancing is just my job. And is there a place for that after September 11th? We have the ability to add a dimension to the author's story. We have a chance to really examine the world on a deeper level. Media, politics, spirituality, ethics, accountability are what we want to address in this show. CBC News Sundays, tomorrow morning on most CBC stations. This summer shizzles with Music Works. Sparks fly as some of Canada's hottest bands perform in our music warehouse. Give these people a beat. Jay Englishman. Jack Soul. McMaster and James. Soul Decision. Join host Pat Mastriani and feel the heat this summer on Music Works, Monday at 5.30 on NBC. They're big. They're battling. And they're back on CBC. Expos, Jays. Tomorrow at 1 Eastern on CBC's Rogers Blue Jays Baseball. You've waited four years, and now it's here. The FIFA World Cup Final. Brazil, Germany. Exclusive live coverage only on CBC Television and CBC Radio 1. Tomorrow morning at 6.30. Three hits for the Expos in the ball game. Home runs by Vlad Guerrero and Jose Macias have staked the Expos to a 2-0 lead. They have won the first four games of the six-game series in 2002 against the Toronto Blue Jays. Eric Kinski has the lone hit so far for Toronto. And the fine rookie third baseman has extended his hit streak to eight. comfortable at the plate. He told me yesterday that he's seen the ball well. He's not jumping like he was a couple of weeks ago. He struggled a little bit early June, really. All into May, he got away from the patience he was showing in the first part of the season. And now he's back taking pitches off the plate, being aggressive on ones in the strike zone. He walked six times in that three-game series against Tampa Bay. Last night, hits this ball in the air, but Macias strides over to record the out. And it's been an impressive June for Eric Hinsky. See the frustration. He is mad every time he makes an out. I'd love to see that in a young player. He got a good swing on that ball. Did it pretty well, missed it a little. Probably feels he should have hit that off the wall in right center. Well, he rifled a bat in Tampa, and umpire Jim Reynolds, I think, was a little upset as if uh, it was directed at him, but he just seems to get fired up every time he records it out. Yeah, I think umpires are learning that in his rookie season that Eric Hinsky will show that emotion. And there's two out. And how about that arm? Nice fluid motion from Cabrera. The ball transferred to his throwing hand. And then that strong arm. He's back. Look at that. Behind the line, the cutout line of the infield. Look at that throw right on the money to Galarraga. In time to get a hustling roll of Mondesi. A little crow hop. Sets himself, squares himself. 
looks like a pitcher does to the plate. He squares himself with that lead shoulder to first base. So Delgado steps in, one for 12 against the Expos without an RBI so far this year. And Yoshi has retired nine of the last what? 10 men he has faced, just the one walk to Vernon Wells. He has made it look easy through the first three plus innings. Split-fingered fastball as well as the straight change. Watch the bottom fall out of this pitch. Wow, that really drops down, and Delgado swings over it, and he was out in front of it as well. One, two, and he strikes out Delgado. Same pitch. Came right back with it. Another one, two, three inning for Yoshi. That's the first strikeout of the game for Masato Yoshi. And he's held the Expos to, for the Blue Jays to one hit so far. He is an intriguing story these Expos are fashioning under the direction of Frank Robinson. Six games over 500, six and a half out of first place in the National League East. They're four games out of a wild card spot, but bolstered with the deal for Bartolo Colon and Omar Manaya, Frank Robinson, and the Expos are serving notice that uh, it could be a very interesting second half. And we spoke with the Expo GM, and he may not be done. No, I asked him that. I said, what are you looking for? He said, well, we'd like to add a bat. Frank Robinson said that last night. So he is staying busy. He said he never stops. Trying to improve the ball club. Well, you got the impression at the start of the year this would be kind of a caretaker role. Yellow racket rounding the ball to his team. Double pumps and fires it across. Well, it's a very interesting situation for the Montreal Expos. They were one of the two teams that were mentioned in the offseason. As far as contraction is concerned, they were, trying to, they were talking about el eliminating the Expos as well as the, Mo the Minnesota Twins. And look at what the Twins are doing this year as well. But in the Expos, I guess the question becomes if they win or they get to the postseason, you know, is it going to be possible to contract it to eliminate the franchise? Or are they, do they come, become more valuable? And Mania said they're already more valuable with the way they've played and the fact that they've acquired Bartolo Colon. attempting to sell the ball club and move them to Northern Virginia or D.C. or a couple of the other cities in the United States that have been mentioned as possible new homes. What? Cabrera taking a strike, two and one. Pete Walker with five strikeouts in the game. And now two and two. Walker with seven strikeouts in his last start June 8th. And now a full count to the Expo shortstop. And I think the Expos do not have a lot to lose this season. I, I mean, they they knew they were close to be, being contracted in the offseason. It's been mentioned they may not be in Montreal next year. There's a flare hit in the right field. Mondes see a long way, and it skips by him. And perhaps fortunately for the Blue Jays, skips into the seat. So it is a ground rule double for Orlando Cabrera. You're absolutely right, Chris. That was a big break for the Blue Jays, that ball bounding into the seats. After Montesi gave it a great chase, made a great effort trying to catch it in the air. Cabrera going the other way, ball just dropping inside the right field line. And had that ball hit the glove of Montesi on the bounce and stayed in the ballpark, that's at least a triple for Cabrera. And what a great effort, though, by the right fielder. So with one out, a runner in scoring position for Michael Barrett, who does not have an RBI this month. His last run batted in came May 30th at 
It's a span of 17 games for the young Expos catcher. And he has been tearing it up on the road. He's batting 351 away from Montreal. Set corner. That's a strange stat when you consider how poorly the Expos have played on the road in comparison with a 27 and 12 home record. Yeah, the best home record in baseball. Expos nine games under 500 on the road, and that with winning their last two. I think it's quirky more than anything. Every given year, there'll be certain players that play well on the road. Not so well at home, well at night in night games, not so well in day games, and it will change from year to year. When there's a pattern for an entire ball club, like the Blue Jays have not played well at home in the last couple of seasons, then you start to wonder why and look into that a little further. part of the plate and high and Barrett knew as soon as he hit it second deck his last home run was May 7th so Barrett bumps the slump in a big way here with a two run homer in the fifth now Wilkerson next through the right side for a base hit Sixth hit of the game for the Expos. Half that total have gone over the wall. Well, after that base hit, we're going to see some action in the Blue Jay bullpen. Bear at home run doubling the score for the Expos. between third and the catcher duty. What? So there's the activity in the Blue Jays pen. Corey Thurman, the right-hander, Felix Heredia, the left-hander. Jose Macias, he is the batter, and like Michael Barrett, he has already homered in this game. So a shot in the third, and we really got Wilkerson wandering. He's been working on his feet work. Last night he threw out a runner, just the second runner he's caught this year trying to steal. Perfect throw. And here, a quick throw to first almost gets Barrett. Or excuse me, Wilkerson. Two and one the count to Macias. Wilkerson with just two stolen bases on the year. He's been caught four times. Hasn't been much doubt about any of the three that have gone the distance here today. Guerrero to deep center field, the line shot over the right field wall by Macias, and a second deck effort by Barrett here in the Expo fifth. The Blue Jays seem to think that Brad Wilkerson is going to be stealing here with one out. Three straight hits against Pete Walker. 
after he got Galarraga to bounce to third. Two and two to Macias. the grip of that split fingered fastball that Walker will take on every pitch and then he'll change it as he goes in with Wilkerson not going in a called strike sends Macias back and there's two down well that's a sixth strikeout five innings that Pete Walker has had today and it's the fifth one looking right on the outside corner gets Macias Bill Welke calling the balls and strikes and here's Jose Bidro and Bidro looking for his first hit 0 for 4 last night 0 for 2 so far this afternoon 4 for 19 against the Blue Jays this year so he's due, the man they call the hit machine. Hit machine from both sides of the plate. Uses the whole field. Leads the National League with 103 hits. And tops in the senior circuit with 32 multi-hit games. Two and one to the Expo's second baseman. I can believe Jose Vidro is heading back to the All-Star game this year. He made the team two years ago. Although that's a tough position in the National League. There are several second basemen having very good years. Sharply hit ball off the glove of Delgado. Walker trying to get there. And he doesn't beat Vidro to the bag. And that's Walker's mistake. He did not break initially. I think he made the assumption that Delgado was going to field it and take it himself, but the ball got by Delgado. Delgado did a nice job getting a glove on that sharply hit ball for, by Vidro. And watch Walker. He stands and watches it. And then he breaks, and that was the difference. He's got to be there. Anytime the ball's hit on the ground of the right side as a pitcher, you have to break. Delgado makes a very nice play. But he isn't able to get it to Walker in time covering. And that may spell the end for Pete Walker. The fourth hit of the inning. A couple of runs already in. And Corey Thurman will come in to pick up Pete Walker here in the Expo fifth inning. slows you down. Turn to Robaxacet with two active ingredients, one to relieve back pain, the other to relax tense back muscles. It's the brand doctors and pharmacists recommend most, so you can get back in the swing. Robaxacet, helping you walk away from back pain. Chicken McGrill, a McVeggie burger on a whole wheat bun with a new soy patty, and a fruit and yogurt parfait with canola. Give us a little McDonald's in every Give 
think about running a marathon. Pete Walker's afternoon is done after four and two thirds innings of work here at Skydome. And he leaves, trailing 4 0 and a couple of base runners inherited by Corey Thurman as he has to step in against Vladimir Guerrero. Yeah, tough chore for the rookie. Although he has pitched well for the Blue Jays this season. afternoon for Pete Walker. It's one of those games, I think, for Walker, as you look at the numbers for Thurman on the season, 23rd appearance for the right-hander. A lot of walks, though. That strikeout-to-walk ratio has to improve. Changeups. Started Guerrero with two changeups. Missed with the first. And that one had Guerrero way out in front. Corkscrewing into the batter's box. He was looking for his second Home run of the afternoon there. Fouls it back one and two. Thurman has allowed just one earned run in his last six appearances over 12 and a third innings. Wilkerson, the base runner at second. And Pedro at first. Guerrero trying to add to an RBI total that is at 55. Well, he should be heading back to the All-Star game as well. He's an automatic at this stage in his, in his career. Ball hit into center. Vernon Wells coming on to make the play. And Thurman does the job retiring Guerrero to strand two base runners. But more damage done in the fifth, and it's 4 0 Expos. Wake up to CBC News Sunday. What we're trying to do is make it more personal for people. Singing and dancing is just my job. And is there a place for that on September 11th? We have the ability to add a dimension to the obvious story. We have a chance to really examine the world on a deeper level. Media, politics, spirituality, ethics, accountability are what we want to address in this show. CBC News Sundays, tomorrow morning on most CBC stations. For the best in sports coverage, find out why CBC Sports is the home of the champions all year round. Whether it's on the Olympics world stage or down to earth on Canadian soil, we bring home the stars and the stories that matter most. To keep pace with the best, follow CBC Sports, the place champions call home. There are other people. Why should you be the only one involved? But I am involved. We are all involved. Back to back. James a Dean. boy was killed tonight. Rebel Without a Cause, followed by East of Eden, tonight at 10 on CBC. Dust off your hats, kick up your boots, and saddle up for Canada's biggest parade. Tune in to CBC Sunday, July 7th for the GMC Calgary Stampede Parade. B. Walker getting some... Given some congratulations to Thurman to strand the two runners that he left. And not a bad outing for Pete Walker, but a not a very pretty pitching line. Seven hits and four and two-thirds. Four runs all earned. He didn't walk anyone. He struck out six. He needed 80 pitches to cover those four-plus innings. three home runs on the year until today's start. Three more in this game with Aaron Fletcher. Leading off the Blue Jay fifth with a ground out to the second baseman, Jose Pedro. And again, Yoshi is cruising along here. He has given up just one single to Eric Kinski and a base on balls to Vernon Wells in the second inning. Since then, no base runners for the Blue Jays. You talked about their lack of offense off the top of the show. Now has 
extended his streak of not allowing a run to 12 and 2 thirds innings as a starter. And a fly ball caught by Macias again, quickly two out for Yoshi. Well, the heart to the Blue Jays' order has been silenced. Yeah, 0 for 4, and they've really made five outs because Modesty bounced into a double play to end the first inning. Well, Yoshi has had the Blue Jay batters fooled. He's kept them off stride with a lot of off-speed pitches. Had retired nine straight, and Guerrero comes on to make the play a quick 1-2-3 inning. Ten in a row set down by Yoshi, and only five pitches required in the fifth inning to retire the Blue Jays in order. Wake up to CBC News Sunday. What we're trying to do is make it more personal for people. Singing and dancing is my job, and is there a place for that after September 11th? We have the ability to add a dimension to the author's story. We have a chance to really examine the world on a deeper level. Media, politics, spirituality, ethics, accountability are what we want to address in this show. CBC News Sundays, tomorrow morning on most CBC stations. You've waited four years, and now it's here. The FIFA World Cup Final. Brazil, Germany. Exclusive live coverage only on CBC Television and CBC Radio 1. Tomorrow morning at 6.30. The World Cup. It brings you up. It takes you down. Filmmaker Peter Lynch takes an intimate look at Toronto's multicultural soccer cultures in Soccer Fever, a passion play. Wednesday at 7 on CBC. Because the world still spins on the weekend, CBC News brings you continuing coverage of what's going on internationally and here at home. Sunday Report with Allison Smith. Stay tuned for Venture. Then, the latest from the world of business. Good evening, I'm Diane Buckner. Welcome to Venture. And we never know whether or not we're going to be working or not working. We see opportunity and we're out to capture it. This will be a ghost town. It all starts at 10, Sunday nights on CBC Television. Expos have won four straight against the Blue Jays this year. They lead this game 4-0 and have limited the Blue Jays to just four hits over 14 innings here at Skydome this holiday weekend. And when you don't get the timely hitting, it magnifies the, the little things and it magnifies the pitching. And again, just to finish the thought on starter Pete Walker, I said that I, I thought he threw the ball well, and I think Gil Patterson would agree with that. I think he has to be pleased with the way Pete Walker threw the ball, as evidenced by the six strikeouts, the no, no walks, he didn't walk anyone. And five of those strikeouts were looking. He caught exposed hitters looking, which says that his stuff was good today. But he made three mistakes. The three home runs were mistakes. They were the difference in the runs. All four runs for the Expo scoring on the home runs. Two of them were hanging sliders. And even the one to Guerrero. O'Leary hits that high in the air. And Bird waits for it to come down. The pitch that Vladimir Guerrero hit way in deep to center field off the Windows restaurant was a pitch that stayed on the inside part of the plate. And in order to keep him in the ballpark, you're better off staying away. He has great plate coverage, but he hit one deep. They've got the Expos rolling way up there off of the Windows restaurant. One out in the six for Tatis, who homered last night, is the batter. And a reminder that at 7 o'clock local tonight, we will have a replay of the third place game from the World Cup between Turkey and South Korea. And tomorrow morning, the World Cup final. Brazil and Germany. Brian Williams, Bob Leonard Doozy, Jason DeVos have done a great job for the last month and will provide studio commentary tonight and tomorrow as we wrap up the coverage of World Cup 2002. Well, who do you like in that final? Well, it's pretty well matched. It is. Game. And, uh, I love the way Brazil plays, so it'll be interesting. It's been a it's been a a World Cup full of surprises. The international parity on yeah. the soccer scene. Yeah, several countries.
playing well with a good showing in the World Cup this year. I mean, no one would have expected South Korea and Turkey to be in the third place game. Hard to believe Brazil and Germany, traditional powers, have never met. In the well, you're getting up to watch it? I'll be up. Now, who are you picking? I like Brazil as well, but since you, you're picking Brazil, I'll, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Germany. Asking Brian, he's the he's our soccer expert. But it was Latin night last night here, and uh, I'm sure the soccer fans will be anticipating uh, tomorrow's game and kind of a festive weekend here in Toronto. down the third baseline. One out in the Expo six. Tease a double in two trips so far. And he fouls the eighth pitch of the at-bat back and, and a nice duel here with Corey Thurman. Frank Robinson has liked Tatis's approach at the plate in recent weeks and says he has a lot more success when he makes the pitcher come into the zone. Hasn't been chasing as many pitches lately. Chase that, however, and a strikeout for Thurman, two out in the inning. And Corey Thurman came back again with a 3-2 changeup. He's going to choke that ball back in his hands. It's almost a split-fingered fastball the way he throws it. He threw a 3-2, and Tatis fouled it off three previous pitches ago. And that time he chases the ball down in the dirt. Nice dig there by Huckabee behind home plate. He has been a nice surprise. Blue Jays acquired him in the Rule 5 draft back in December of last year from the Kansas City Royals, which means as a Rule 5 player, Corey Thurman has to stay with the Blue Jays the entire season. There's a breaking ball. He has a big overhand curveball to complement the splitter and the fastball. Gets ahead of Galarraga 0-2 with a pair of breaking balls. And then Galarraga chases one, so a couple of strikeouts in the inning for Corey Thurman, who's retired four straight since he's come on in this game that the Expos lead 4-0. Columbia Pictures presents Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones in Men in Black 2. Columbia Pictures and Rockport, the official shoe of Men in Black 2, are giving you a chance to win. Beginning June 10th, visit a participating retailer and fill in a ballot for a chance to win a trip for two to Hollywood. The lucky winner also receives $1,000 in Rockport merchandise, plus a Sony Handycam camcorder. Try on the Rockport Men in Black shoe at select Rockport retailers, and you could win free passes to see Men in Black 2. Opening July 3rd in theaters everywhere. Now. Happy birthday, Canada! Ta -da! It's the 2002 Canada Day coin. Our new 25 cent coin from the Royal Canadian Mint. Designed by Judith Chartier. From Quebec. Bonjour. Look for it. Collect it. Celebrate it. It's a gift for all of Canada. Yeah. Oh boy, birthday cake. Where's the cake? Oh. <laughs> Was there cake? CBC News, The National, with Peter Mansbridge. Weeknights at 10. Keep pace with the world's best, all year round. Come to the place where the champions hang their hats and their hardware. At CBC Sports, home of the champions.
Patrick, John Cerruti back at Sky Dome. Hope you're enjoying our first Rogers Blue Jays baseball telecast on CBC this season. I know the Expo fans enjoying this game and this series a little bit more than the hometown fans. As the Blue Jay bats have been silenced. And the Expos have made a defensive change. Mike Mordecai comes on for Jose Vidro to play second. Well, something must have happened to Vidro. base when he beat up the hit against Walker. There's Dave Berg with a leadoff single, just the second of the afternoon for the Blue Jays. As Berg snaps an 0 for 17 skid. And that other hit came from Hinsky back in the first inning, the second batter that Yoshi faced. And you got to start to think that Yoshi may not be in the ball game much longer because he has not pitched beyond the sixth inning this season. In fact, he's only pitched six innings in one start this year. That came back in early April, his first start of the year against Cincinnati. He went six innings, got the win. But he hasn't pitched past the fifth in his other five starts this year. He's making his seventh start here today. base runner. There's a gold glover, Orlando Cabrera. It's a broken bat, one hopper to his left. And what a fine play. This is for the highlight reel. Boy, the ball, the pitch just shatters the bat of Huckabee. Berg had to hesitate at first to make sure that ball dropped to the surface. How about that flip? And Mordecai barehanding the ball. That's a fine play right there. Made 12 errors this year, one more than all the last year. The bats coming around, and maybe just uh, that picks up your defense too when everything starts to fall into place. Exactly, it does. And when you're struggling offensively, that will wear on you. you a lot of times take that out to the field, and you don't have the same concentration. Oh, and a big year offensively last year. He's playing with a lot of confidence, and it carried into the shortstop position. Three base runners in the game for the Blue Jays, and twice Yoshi has delivered a double play ball to help his cause. And with two out in the six, Jose Cruz Jr. And because of those two double plays, Yoshi has only faced one over the minimum into the sixth inning. A couple of hits that raced with the double plays, two double play balls. And the only other base runner was a Vernon Wells two-out walk in the second. In the air, center field, and Macias is there. And so Yoshi continues to cruise. We head to the seventh inning at Skydome. Four nothing, Expos. Because the world still spins on the weekend, CBC News brings you continuing coverage of what's going on internationally and here at home. Sunday Report with Allison Smith. Stay tuned for Venture. Then, the latest from the world of business. Good evening, I'm Diane Buckner. Welcome to Venture. We never know whether or not we're going to be working or not working. When we see opportunity and we're out to capture it. This will be a ghost town. It all starts at 10, Sunday nights on CBC Television. Celebrate the Queen's Golden Jubilee with a personal look at a woman whose birthright was to be queen. The death of her father had a huge impact on her. But suddenly, she was queen. She had so much to do, so much to learn. Then, from nervous young man to proud father to humiliated ex-husband, the trials of Charles, king in waiting. Make it a royal evening. Tuesday, beginning at 8 on CBC. Canada. 
Canada, 135 years young. Party with the CBC from the gala stage, high on Parliament Hill. Followed by a cross-country celebration with celebrity hosts and special guests. From Charlottetown, the birthplace of Canada. Celebrate Canada Day into the night, starting at 8, Monday night on CBC Television. Brought to you in part by the Chicken Farmers of Canada. Young fan enjoying the Canada Day weekend. And the second game of a three-game series between Canada's teams, the Expos and the Blue Jays. Just want to take another look at Bidro, who has left this game. Wondering if this was the play that might have caused the problem. That's the infield hit in the last inning. And you see him hustling down that line, just legging out the base hit, just beating Walker to the bang. That was the play that Walker broke late from the pitcher's mound. And yeah, I would, I would guess. It's just what I was thinking when you mentioned it in the top of this inning, Chris, that Peter may have felt a little twinge in one of his legs or hamstring. And Frank Robinson took him out immediately, put Mark, Mike Mordecai in at second base. Hard to see whether or not he might have been cleated on that race to the bag. That was close as well, yeah, the right foot of Walker landing very close to Vidro's left foot on that bag. Here's Cabrera, who's had a solid series so far, and we've seen a couple of slick plays defensively. He is 10 for his last 17 at the plate. Double in the fifth inning this afternoon. And he scored ahead of Michael Barrett on the catcher's home run in the fifth. <laughs> Thurman falling behind the Expo shortstop three and one. Three Expo home runs in the game have produced the four runs. Chopper back to Thurman. And Corey Thurman has retired five in a row. He's been mixing in his changeup very effectively, as well as that overhand curveball. Comes back and gets Cabrera after falling behind the shortstop. He's just 23 years of age, out of Augusta, Georgia, now lives in Texas. And again, a Rule 5 draft choice from the Kansas City Royals, originally drafted and signed by the Royals back in 1996. He was a fourth-round selection. And he's been a, he was a starter throughout his minor league career, won 13 games last year for Wichita, the AA affiliate. Barrett, fly ball which will reach the seats. Wichita is in the Texas League, double A baseball. Thurman went 13 and 5 with a 3.37 ERA and 25 starts. He allowed just 117 hits in 155 innings and he struck out 148. And surprisingly, was not protected by Kansas City, but the Blue Jays and J.P. Ricciardi did their homework. Realized he was not protected. And then they went to work, making some phone calls, finding out what type of person he was, what type of stuff he has. Ended up drafting him, bring it, brought him to spring training, and he made the ball club. A couple of strikeouts so far today. And he evens the count against Barrett, two and two. And you know, Michael Barrett feels a lot better about things after that two-run homer in the fifth. He was mired in a three-for-32 skid, batting 176 in June, and finally delivered his first out of the eyes of the month. And watch Ken Huckabee in this at bat. You've already seen him work Barrett away. He's been setting up away, calling for pitches away from Barrett. It was a hanging breaking ball inside part of the plate that Barrett drilled for the two-run shot. And it's Mondesi in right. Two up. So another fine relief performance 
so far by Corey Thurman. Retiring the six men he has faced. You might think the Blue Jays are tempted to insert him in the rotation. Well, not this year. Not in his rookie season. Perhaps next year he might even go back to AAA. He could perhaps be a starter down the road. The Blue Jays have used 11 different starters this season. Thurman, not one of them. have their rotation somewhat in place, the one they expected to have coming out of spring training. Now that Chris Carpenter, Steve Paris, Esteban Loaiza have joined Roy Halladay in the rotation. Three of those pitchers coming off the disabled list. We will see Loaiza tomorrow. And you see Toronto using 11 as well as St. Louis and San Diego. And Kansas City has used 12 different pitchers in their rotation this year. Usually a sign of flux, I guess, for for an organization, for a ball club. And Here's the three-one to Wilkerson on the ground to Delgado. And he'll handle it himself. And Corey Thurman retires the side in order as we head to the bottom of the seventh. That's Guido. Your company shares a single pool of minutes, so there's less unused airtime, fewer extra charges. It's a whole new business day from Rogers AT&T. Imagine. Wake up to CBC News Sunday. What we're trying to do is make it more personal for people. I'm singing and dancing against my job, and is there a place for that on September 11th? We have the ability to add a dimension to the author's story. We have a chance to really examine the world on a deeper level. Media, politics, spirituality, ethics, accountability are what we want to address in this show. CBC News Sundays, tomorrow morning on most CBC stations. Next week on CBC Sports Saturday. At noon, Women Warriors profiles Canada's Haley Wickenheiser. She's solid gold. Then it's Sports Journal at 12.30. People don't understand what it takes to be an athlete. It's huge. Athletics. Oslo Golden League is on track at 1 Eastern. Followed at 2.30 by ATCO Power Queen Elizabeth II Cup from Spruce Meadows. CBC Sports Saturday. Coverage begins next week at noon Eastern. Three home runs, the difference in this game. In the second inning, Vladimir Guerrero with his 18th of the year. Jose Macias hit his third. And in the fifth, a two-run shot by Michael Barrett. His first since early May, making it a long day for Pete Walker. And you noticed all three of those pitches were on the inside part of the plate. Three mistakes that Walker made. Here's our recap. Yoshi has faced just one batter over the minimum through the first six innings. And six hits in the series for the Blue Jays in 15 innings. Eric Pinsky has two of those, an eight-game hit streak. Batting 324 coming into the game for the month of June. to his first hit. Not hit right on the button, but because the ball is elevated in the strike zone, it's easier for the batter to muscle this ball into the outfield. Ball up at letter high. That is letters, and he just muscled that into left center field. The Blue Jays have the first base runner. On here in the seventh batter. They haven't had many bat base runners, period. They got the leadoff man on here in the, this And there's a shot by Mondesi.
Mondesi. Tatis can't play it, and he can't find it. And Mondesi is in the second. And they're scoring it a double. That's the first hit for Raul Mondesi. And 12 plate appearances against Yoshi. And it should be a double. Tough play for the third baseman, Tatis. Diving to his right. Ball went off of his glove. I think he thought it got by him down in the left field corner. And he didn't react immediately. He wasn't sure. Well, he wasn't sure if it was around third base. He knew he got a glove on it. Ball went straight into foul territory. There's Brian Butterfield, the third base coach, letting Hinsky know to come on over to third base. And that's going to be all for Yoshi. A nice afternoon for him. And Frank Robinson's going to go to the bullpen. Yoshi goes six plus, allowing just four hits in the game. And the Expo fans appreciate his efforts here at Skydome today. This is Juno Beach, where Canadians landed on D-Day. And I was one of them. We're going to build a memorial here that will tell the story of Canadians who fought and died for freedom. To all the Canadians who are helping us build it, thank you. What we did will live in memory forever. Hey, Ray, look at all those movies, huh? You think I could be a movie star, Carl? Can you act? Oh, I could act like a movie star. <laughs> this is an important water. You call this a health spa? Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. Huh? These are brown. I specifically asked for green. Guaranteed to be there at Blockbuster. Rent a Beautiful Mind, starring Russell Crowe and Jennifer Connelly. His gift for breaking codes will push his mind beyond its limits. It's guaranteed on DVD and VHS, so make it a Blockbuster night. Ray, you can stop now. Not until I get a bigger trailer. Good to travel with my sidekick. Oh, that's nice. When I'm hungry and I can't stop, my sidekick always helps. See? That's right. Yes. My Hershey sidekick will put this hunger on hold. Mm. Hey, traitor! Shut up, Clip Clop. New Hershey sidekick with real peanut butter, soft nougat, all covered in milk chocolate. It puts hunger on hold. Do you know, I was so hungry. I could have finished that sentence and the ride gets oh, bouncy. Come on, Get off my back, my I'm friend. sick. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow afternoon, 1 o'clock Eastern, for the finale of this three-game holiday weekend set at Skydome between the Expos and the Blue Jays. 4 nothing Montreal with the lead, but the Blue Jays making some noise against Masato Yoshi and the Expos here in the seventh. Well, we said that his stamina was a question, although he pitched very well today, only needed 60 pitches to get into the seventh inning. It's the first time he got into the seventh inning this year in seven starts. He was averaging just just over four starts, four innings per start coming into this ball game. Well, he turns things over to jo Joey Eichen, the left-hander, one of three lefties in the Expos pen with runners at second and third, and the batter, Carlos Delgado. Eichen has not surrendered a run in his last nine and a third innings. Of Swinging at the first pitch. The last time Yoshi started, he went five, came out of the game without allowing a run, and then the bullpen coughed up a four-run lead and cost him the win in that game. Yoshi, again, has not registered a victory since mid-April. Delgado with just one extra base hit in his last nine games, so a big first baseman has been scuffling and an opportunity here to break out with two runners in scoring position you saw delgado with a very weak swing on that first pitch a breaking ball a slider from Aishin. it's it to the right side the runner will score and delgado retired but carlos delgado delivers his 57th rbi of the season as Hinsky. Puts the extra, the Blue Jays first run. The Carlos had a weak swing on the first pitch, and you would expect Eichen to come back with that slider. Well, he missed with the second pitch, and he came right back again with a slider. And good hitters like Carlos Delgado will look for that pitch. He knows that he looked poor on the first slider, so he's going to expect Eichen to throw them that, in that pitch again. He just pulled it, rolled over it, but he still delivers the run from third base. So with one out, 
Mondesi, the base runner at third for former Expo Darren Fletcher. And Carlos not only scores the first run, Hinsky from third base, but he also moves the runner, Mondesi, from second to third. So another RBI opportunity here. Fletcher can hit a ground ball to the second baseman, and they can plate another run. That's something the Blue Jays have not done very well in the last couple of weeks. They've won just four games in the last 15, and they're batting just 164 over that span with runners in scoring position if you throw out that 20 game, 20 run outburst in Tampa Bay earlier this week. Fletcher in an 0 2 hole against Dyson. And holds up. Darren, six years at Montreal Expo. In his fifth and perhaps most frustrating year as a Blue Jay. And perhaps his last with the Blue Jays. A chance that he could be traded at midseason this year before the July 31st trading deadline. I should like that pitch a little more than home plate umpire Bill Welke. He is produced with runners in scoring position. And again, like Delgado, Fletcher has to be looking breaking ball. That slider has to protect that plate, try to put the ball in play. Ball strike three. Eichen sets Fletcher down. And there's two of them. Well, Eichen got Fletcher looking. He he would have caught me as well. I would have looked at breaking ball. And Aisha locks him up with a four-seam fastball right on the outside corner. And you can see the way Fletcher approached that pitch. He was waiting back, keeping his hands back, looking off speed or looking breaking ball, and he got caught. So two out with Mondesi in third. The center fielder Vernon Wells steps in to face Aisha. Be a very nice job by Aishan if he's able to strand Mondesi at third base. Got Delgado, very dangerous hitter on a weak rounder to second, even though it did play to run. And he struck out Fletcher. Foul back to even the count. Four runs, seven hits, no errors for the Expos. The Blue Jays a run on four hits. Two by Eric Hinsky. And a base runner at third with two out in the seventh. Expos did it with offense two weeks ago in Montreal. So far in this series, they've been doing it with good pitching. likes the chemistry he's got in his bullpen. We have three left-handers. Aishan, along with the former Blue Jay, Graham Lloyd, and Scott Stewart, who got the save last night, a two-inning save. And they have five right-handers down there in that bullpen. There's Graham Lloyd on the right. Tall Australian left-hander. Coach sitting next to the manager, Frank 
Robinson. Back in uniform after believe, about 10 years out of the game. He worked in the Major League Baseball front office as an executive. Frank Robinson, the only man in Major League history to win the most valuable player award in both leagues. I was going to say, no, not very many players have worn the uniform better than Frank Robinson. First African-American manager in Major League Baseball back in the 70s with the Cleveland Indians. Tatis from his knees makes the play. And they strand Mondesi. Blue Jays break through for one, but that's all. Against Yoshi in the Expos through seven. 4-1, Montreal. They're big. They're battling. And they're back on CBC. Expos, Jays, tomorrow at 1 Eastern on CBC's Rogers Blue Jays Baseball. You've waited four years, and now it's here. The FIFA World Cup Final. Brazil, Germany. Exclusive live coverage only on CBC Television and CBC Radio 1. Tomorrow morning at 6.30. Canada. Canada. 135 years young. Party with the CBC from the gala stage, high on Parliament Hill. Followed by a cross-country celebration with celebrity hosts and special guests. From Charlottetown, the birthplace of Canada. Celebrate Canada Day into the night, starting at 8, Monday night on CBC Television. Brought to you in part by Royal Canadian Mint. Nine Jets, wing to wing. A 360-degree inside loop at 4G's. 1,800 seconds. All right, one more room. Jason Canada Snowbirds, Monday at 7 on CBC Television. Elizabeth, Her Majesty the Queen, is having the party of a lifetime. Featuring the biggest names in music. Party at the Palace on CBC. Skydome, the Montreal Expos lead the Toronto Blue Jays 4-1. to one. Seven hits for the Expos and just four hits for Toronto. Last night, the Blue Jays managed just three hits. And the Jays have a new pitcher. Scott Cassidy comes on to take over for Corey Thurman, who pitched outstanding baseball, two and a third perfect innings. Cassidy worked an inning last night, a perfect ninth inning last night for the Blue Jays. Look at that, just 20 hits allowed in 35 innings with 28 strikeouts. The only drawback, the 18 walks for the young right-hander. He'll face Jose Macias to lead off this eighth inning. Macias with the home run, a solo shot in the third. One of a hat trick of Expo home runs on the day. Scott Cassidy has a hard sinking fastball, a slider, and a changeup. He, like Corey Thurman, was a starter throughout his amateur and minor league career. Lopez with the throw. Get Macias for the first out. Well, the Expos have won all four meetings against the Jays this season in interleague play, and this is what the two teams have done head-to-head -head since interleague play began back in 1997. The Jays have the edge. They've pitched better. They've hit a little bit better. They've scored more runs, more home runs. But the Montreal Expos have turned the tables this year against a younger more inexperienced Blue Jays team. And the Expos are young as well. But the, their young players, Vidro, Guer Guerrero, have been in the league a little bit longer. Mike Mordecai's first plate appearance came on for Jose Vidro, who we are told felt a slight twinge in the knee, so the Expos not taking any uh, chances. And Pedro leaving this game what? after his base hit in the fifth. 
Mordecai delivered the game-winning RBI in the bottom of the ninth a couple of weeks ago in the series finale against the Blue Jays. With a single off Kelvin Escobar. So two out for the Expos in the eighth inning as Vladimir Guerrero steps in. Well, he got the Expos on the board in the second inning, leading off the second inning with his 18th home run, a blast to center field. We were talking about the All-Star game. He is third in balloting and Milwaukee. And that's nice to see because the, the Expos are not seen a lot around Major League Baseball without the TV coverage. And a lot of people in the bigger cities in America do not know a lot about Guerrero. Hit to center and Wells flags it down. Quick inning. Impressive inning for Scott Cassidy as the Expos are retired. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Expos have ridden the long ball to this 4-1 lead, and now T.J. Tucker is the third Montreal pitcher of the day. Big right-hander with a very good arm. Oh, yeah. Throws hard, good, sharp breaking ball. And he has been a closer as well for the Expos, one of four pitchers in that bullpen that have saved ball games this year. It's actually quite unique. The Expos have four different pitchers with four or more saves, although Scott Stewart is, has been the closer the last few weeks. And did he look good last night? Yeah, boy, perfect. Two innings. Tiring the final six batters of the bowl game. The notch his ninth save. What? The Tucker has four saves. Stewart with the nine. Lloyd has five, and Matt Burgess has six saves. Two two to Lopez. The count runs full. What were you saying off the top of the show about not gaining any ground on Atlanta? Just notice the Braves have done it again. Another victory over the Boston Red Sox. Two to one today. Last night it was ninth inning heroics to beat the Bo Sox four two. Bouncing ball to Tatis and the submarine across to retire Lopez. Now we saw Vladimir Guerrero make the final out in the last inning. He, he flied out to center field, but even that ball was hit hard. And we were, we were talking about the all-star selection. He should be named this weekend. Voted in once again by the fans. recognizing this young talent. He's been doing it for several years in Montreal. And I think of him as one of the five best players in baseball. And he has been for a few years now. Dave Berg with one of four Blue Jay hits on the day. And Shannon Stewart, who has not started the last two games because of hamstring problems is in the on-deck circle and will bat for Ken Huckabee. I wondered if we would have, if we were going to see Shannon Stewart last night in the ninth inning. Yeah, Carlos Tosca wanted to use him last night, either in the eighth or the ninth inning. 
probably in the ninth inning. He could have pinch hit for Tom Wilson. But Carlos Tosca told me today that he didn't want to take a chance. Obviously, Shannon Stewart feeling a little bit better today. So he will pinch hit here for Huckabee. I mean, he's their best hitter. And you knew when he wasn't put in to pinch hit in yesterday's game that he was hurting. Bird going the other way with the pitch, and it's fouled down the first base line. Two and two, the count on the Blue Jays' second baseman. Pitch is low. Three and two. T.J. Tucker in a game against Chicago earlier this season was summoned from the bullpen and he hadn't really warmed up. And yeah, but strange circumstance. Have you been involved with that as Tucker issues a, a one-out walk? Yes, it did happen to me once earlier in my career at the big league level. And it was in that case, it was just a lack of communication on the part of the manager. Frank Robinson, he did not really that Tucker had not been up. He actually had only thrown about eight pitches. And he went into the ball game, but he still gutted it out. He, <laughs> you know, he said that he wasn't going to deny the baseball in that situation. It's probably when you like to keep that runner Wait. that you've inherited at first pretty close for a few tosses. Shannon Stewart, pinch hitting here in the eighth inning for Ken Huckabee. What? There's that sharp slider from Tucker. And I say the eight pitches that he threw was actually the eight that he's allowed to throw on the mound coming into the game. He had not even gotten up on the mound. The bullpen was hidden from the dugout, so Frank Robinson thought that he had been up warming. He went to the bullpen to bring the right-hander with a 2-0 count on the batter he inherited. Stewart fouls that, and it will reach the seats. The that count remains 0-2. That came in the ninth inning, and Tucker gave up a couple of hits, but he still was able to register his third save. Robinson said he, that had never happened to him before. He said it was just a communication issue and it won't happen again this year. Stewart had three hits in the series finale two weeks ago in Montreal. That pitch missing. And it's one and two. And back on Tuesday in Tampa, Tampa Bay against the Devil Rays. He scored five runs in that 20 to 11 victory, tying a franchise record with Carlos Delgado. It's only been done twice. Hit. Called strike three. Bill Welke seemed to do a double clutch before he sends Stewart back. He's been using that punch out. That's a good pitch. A slider that has a little depth to it. It stays on the outside corner. It goes straight down, really. And Wolke has been using that punch out throughout this ball game. So the pinch hitter is retired. There's two out in the Blue Jays' eight. Back to the top of the order. Jose Cruz Jr. looking for his first hit of this series. Chris, we talked in the open about the missed opportunities, the few opportunities that the Blue Jays have had. They haven't had many in these two ball games against the Expos, but over the last couple of weeks, they've had runners in scoring position and haven't been able to deliver those runners on a consistent basis. Bird, the base runner. One and two. 
And you look back to the last inning, in the seventh inning, they chased the starter, Yoshi, with a couple of base hits, a single by Hinsky and a double by Mondesi. But then they stranded Mondesi at third base. Taking a look at that fastball, catching the outside corner. But there's a situation the Blue Jays should have scored two runs. They got the RBI's ground out by Delgado. Oh, that's it. That just missed. But had they been able to cut the run, the lead in half, well then you, sit, you have a situation now where Cruz represents the tying run. And it's getting late. Four outs to work with for the Blue Jays. just misses. Cruz in just his third start in the leadoff position for the Blue Jays this year and now is one for 14 as the leadoff hitter. Felt as he came off the trip from Tampa like he was really on the verge of breaking out. He had that outstanding series against the Devil Rays. Well, he's, he's hit well against Tampa Bay all season and then he was inserted into the lineup with the Injury to Shannon Stewart. That's the only reason he's at the top of the order in these two ball games. And there's another called strike, and the inning is over. A couple of strikeouts for TJ Tucker here in the Blue Jays' eight. And it remains a three run expo lead. Well, where were you 12 years ago, John Cerruti? I think you remember where you were when Dave Stewart pitched the first of two no-hitters on this day. Yeah, I remember exactly where I was. I was on the losing end. I started that game against the A's, and Stewart was on. Dave Stewart with the no-hitter, and the other one that night, that's good you remember, was Fernando Valenzuela for the Dodgers pitched a no-hitter on the same night, June 29th. 1990. Yeah, 12 years ago today. New battery for the Blue Jays in the ninth inning. Kelvin Escobar comes on, and Tom Wilson replaces Ken Huckabee behind the plate. And Troy O'Leary to lead it off for the Expos in the ninth. Trying to enhance a three-run lead. And O'Leary looking for his first hit of the day. Spent 23 games in Ottawa earlier this season. After being released by Tampa out of the spring. Escobar has not been particularly busy of late. Did come in for a little bit of work Thursday afternoon in the series finale of that game. Fly ball shallow. Left field for Jose Cruz Jr. Well, when you've only won four of your last 15 games, your closer is not going to get a lot of work. There are not a lot of save situations. He has come into some tie ball games. Doesn't like to come into tie games. Most closers prefer just one inning, the ninth inning with the lead. And there's the new closer, you might say, Scott Stewart, who's done an outstanding job, and he's warming, and it looked like he will come in to face Hinsky, Mondesi, and Delgado in the bottom of the ninth inning. And you might expect that with two of those hitters being left-handed hitters. In the Blue Jays without a come from behind victory this season when trailing after seven. Is the stat 0 for 37 or 38 as they try and mount something here in the ninth. 
Well, there haven't been many opportunities for the Blue Jays to score. Yoshi pitched very well as a starter, but again, I go back to that seventh inning, and and now that Shannon Stewart pinch hit for Huckabee in the bottom of the eighth inning, I'm wondering why Shannon Stewart did not pinch hit in the seventh inning. Mondesi was at third base with one out, and he could have pinch hit for Darren Fletcher, a left-handed batter, Fletcher, against a left-handed pitcher, Joey Eichen. Carlos Tosca saving that big bullet in his gun for the eighth inning, but boy, they had a chance to cut the lead in half and score two. And the other thing is, if, if you brought in Shannon Stewart to pinch hit for Fletcher, well, then he became the designated hitter, and he might bat again in the ninth inning. Fletcher due up fourth in the ninth. The pitcher's Tatis on the hip, and he'll go to first. So a base runner for Montreal with one out in the ninth. That pitch came on a full count to a batter, Tatis, who has hurt the Blue Jays this year. Now, there, it's possible there was some intent. It's a fastball, and it's right at the backside of Tatis. I'm not so sure what Escobar would wait to a full count. It looks like Tatis doesn't think <laughs> there was any intent on that part, on the part of Escobar. First pitch hitting. Wells broke back and uh, never did pick up the flight of the ball, and it's a base hit. It looked like he recovered and was going to come get it, but he was too far back. He saw the big swing of Galarraga. You see him looking up into the sky. He, he lost track of that baseball. He thought that ball was hit harder initially. He broke back a couple of steps. He tried to recover and wasn't able to get in in time. The ball's right at the end of the bat. You see him back up and then he says, uh-oh, I better come in too late. Well, that ball hung up. I still think it, he had time. It would, he has such great speed that he would have been able to come in and still make that catch. Eighth hit of the ball game for the Expos. And with one out, two base runners for Orlando Cabrera. And he lashes this into left field. And the runners advance. Bases will be loaded with one out. So Tatis hit by a pitch and now back-to-back -back singles. Loads the bases for Michael Barrett. Valaraga at second. Cabrera at first. You saw Tatis at third. Bases loaded. Gil Patterson, the pitching coach, on the phone to the bullpen. Perhaps to get a lefty up with Brad Wilkerson, a left-handed batter, due up after Barrett. Already two RBIs in the game for the Expos catcher. And if you joined us late, his first home run since May 7th, his first RBIs since May 30th. And now a chance to improve his stats and put this game away. Yeah, this is a big out for Escobar. Ideally, he'd like a ground ball double play, but he's thinking strikeout. He's trying to save those runs. It's going to be tough enough with a three-run deficit. There's the lefty in the Blue Jay bullpen, Scott Ayer. Trying to get ready quickly. It's going to be tough against Stewart in the ninth, trailing by three. Any more, and almost, it's almost impossible to come back. Now two and one to Barrett. Had a couple of huge back-to-back -back games in April against Florida. It's six RBIs and then five, 11, in a couple of games against the Marlins. Down even to two and two.
Escobar trying to work his way out of this jam. And he gets Barrett. Two down. And he got him with a great split-fingered fastball. Same arm action as the 95, 97 mile an hour fastball, but it's thrown about 10 miles an hour slower, and the bottom just falls out of it. Barrett swinging over that. So two down, back to the top of the order, the left fielder Brad Wilkerson. Wilkerson one for four today. What? Takes a called strike. Wilkerson a supplemental pick by the Expos when they lost Darren Fletcher to free agency. situation that Kelvin Escobar has had trouble concentrating and maintaining his focus. A non-safe situation. And see he's run into trouble again here in this inning. Loading the base bases. It was a week ago today in Phoenix against the Arizona Diamondbacks that Escobar came into a 6-2 lead into a game with the Blue Jays leading 6-2 against Arizona. He gave up a run early. Well, that drew a, a meeting from his manager Carlos Tosca, quick trip to the mound, and it was a one-way conversation from Tosca. That ball will reach the stands. And he told Carlos, or Kelvin Escobar in no uncertain terms to get back in the ball game, focus, and go after the hitters, be aggressive. Well, he got the final three outs and preserved the win for the Blue Jays. But again, it wasn't a safe situation for Escobar. Two and two the count on Wilkerson. Two out here in the next place ninth. And count runs full with the bases loaded. Well, he wanted to throw a strike there, two and two, because now with the count full and two outs, all three runners will be on the move, which means a base hit to the outfield will score at least two, possibly three, and really break open this ballgame. For the runners going, swing and a miss. Escobar fanning first Barrett and then Wilkerson after loading them up in the ninth. Well, maybe he needs to feel a little pressure, get himself into a jam. He gets out of it with two strikeouts, but he'll leave it up to the Jays' offense to score three runs in the bottom of the ninth inning. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Toronto Blue Jays in Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Toronto Blue Jays baseball club heading to the bottom of the ninth, 24,344 on hand. As the Expos try to protect this three-run lead. Blue Jays with three hits last night, only four so far tonight. And Eric Hinsky to lead it off in the bottom of the ninth. And the new pitcher for the Montreal Expos is left-hander Scott Stewart. Picked up his ninth save last night. Look at the ERA. In the mid one, 1.59. He's done an outstanding job for Montreal. Comes in, throwing strikes usually. Two innings, three strikeouts last night. A couple of hits today for the rookie third baseman, Hinsky. Average closing in on 300. And a called strike. He's in a hole against Stewart. Stewart pitched a perfect two innings last night, and he struck out Eric Hinsky for the second out in the eighth inning on a good slider. There's that slider right there. A 
although these are the types of adjustments that Eric Hinsky has made throughout this rookie season. Is when he sees a pitcher for the second or third time, he starts to look for certain pitches. Chase that. And we've talked about how he wears his emotions on his sleeve. He'll think about that at bat. One out in the night. Again, a reminder. The third place game of the World Cup is coming up at 7 o'clock local. Turkey and South Korea. You missed it earlier today in the World Cup final. Tomorrow morning, 6.30 Eastern, Brazil and Germany. So the Blue Jays are two outs away from losing their fifth in a row this season to their northern neighbors. As he hits a long way foul. as he doubled off the glove of Tatis his last time up. The Blue Jays would like to just get a couple of base runners trying to send that tying run to the plate. Give them, give them a chance to tie the game with one swing. And they're going to have to hit their way on because Stewart does not walk many batters. foul and the end of the first row down the first base line. Last night marked the second time this month or second time this season I should say that Scott Stewart pitched at least two innings for a save. Of course, this is a safe situation with the Expos leading by three. Only six pitchers have more than one such save this season, and three of them pitch for the Expos. <laughs> In this day and age, you don't see many closers going more than one inning. Four saves in his last five appearances. As he holds up, the appeal at first, and Chris Guccione says no. runner for the Blue Jays says Stewart issues a one out walk. Well, maybe I jinxed him. That's just the 12th walk that the left hander has issued this season. And now have to face Delgado. But again, he's thinking that he does not want the tying run to come to the plate. So he's got to get Delgado here. Donato has struggled against left-handed pitchers this season. This confrontation. Honestly running a chopper that gets through. So a base hit for Carlos Delgado. Mondesi was running and is at third base. So I was going to say Stewart retired Delgado with a runner at third in the ninth. A couple of weeks ago to preserve a 6-5 win. But this time Delgado with the base hit is first of the game and now the tying run comes to the plate. Well they had the shift on him and Carlos looks to hit the ball the other way. A high chopper and look at his split the third baseman and the shortstop. But with that pronounced shift the ball finds the left field area and Montesi on the run moves to third base. So Montesi trying to stay out of the double play on the move. Delgado picks up the hit against the left-hander. Just the 22nd hit for him this year in over 100 at-bats against lefties. And now Joe Lawrence will pinch hit for Darren Fletcher. Right-handed hitter comes in. Lawrence takes ball one. Three for six against the Expos in the series at Olympic Stadium. And now Dick Pohl will come out. Pitching coach wants to confer with Scott Stewart. 
Now, what he's going to do is go over the scouting report on Joe Lawrence and make sure that Stewart and Barrett know exactly what they want to do against the rookie right-handed batter. Lawrence has a little pop. But he, in order to hit the ball out of the ballpark, he has to pull it to left field. And that was a very quick visit from Cole, and I think Dick Cole told him, let's stay away from Lawrence, keep him in the ballpark. That was Matt Hurd just working in case he is needed. Joe Lawrence represents the time run, and he slashes that. Cabrera, big play, and they get the force at second. As the gold glover made the play, Mondesi in to score, but now two out. What a play. Well hit very sharply by Joe Lawrence. Now a pitch inside. Stewart's trying to keep it away. He got it in. Lawrence pulled it sharply. What a great play by Cabrera at second base to get Delgado with the force out. So it's four to two. Lawrence the base runner at first. And Vernon Wells now represents the tying run. But if that gets by Cabrera, Lawrence uncontested will steal second. Vernon Wells had a pair of home runs in the series at Olympic Stadium. Looking for his first hit of the day. Blue Jays down to their final out. Mishandled by Molokai. And Wells will reach. And the Blue Jays are still alive. Runners at the corners with two out of the ninth. And Stewart says that's okay. I'll get the next man. It's Felipe Lopez, the switch hitter. Dick Paul and Frank Robinson thought the game was over. Routine ground ball right at Mordecai. And he bobbles it. You see them staying away from Wells. Wells, like Lawrence, wants to pull the ball. And once he was not able to field it cleanly, there was no chance to get the speedy Vernon Wells. So now it'll be up to Lopez. He's hit eight home runs this year. He has power from both sides of the plate. Had his third triple last night. The tying run at first. In a possible running situation. Remember, Wells represents the tying run at first base. That's Joe Lawrence at third. Vernon Wells at first. And it's a possibility that he could run. Lopez 0 for 3 on the day. And ahead in the count. And now 3-0. Stewart a pitch away from loading them up. This will be the test for the Expos bullpen. When they get into tight games, and see how well these inexperienced pitchers do. Especially in those games that, against the Atlanta Braves. They're gonna play the Atlanta Braves seven times in the next three weeks. Series coming up after this one, and then the return engagement of Olympic Stadium following the All-Star break. Three and one, the count of Lopez. And no throw. A delayed steal by Wells. He didn't get a quick jump, but that fooled the, the defense for Montreal. And now the tying run is at second. There's that stolen base using the speed. Wells swipes second. He didn't have a big lead. It wasn't a straight delayed steal. He got a later break from first, and he I really caught Barrett and the Expos napping. Three and two, the count on Felipe Lopez. A base hit to tie it. And there's the player over Mordecai. It'll drop. Guerrero with the big throw off the line. And Wells in the score. And he got a piece. 
Joseph Barrett, who's been shaken up. And Lopez will be awarded third base because that ball went in to the dugout. What a clutch hit by Felipe Lopez with a full count, two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning, scoring two runs, a big stolen base by Wells is the difference. And Vladimir Guerrero, who we know has such a great arm in right field, delivered that one up the line and couldn't get Wells. Now the trainer and the manager, Frank Robinson, checking on Barrett, who was clipped by Vernon Wells, coming all the way from second base. It's a high breaking ball that Lopez slaps into right, right field. And they know Guerrero has a cannon, but Wells has great speed. Look at the strength of the arm of Guerrero. Boy, that got in there in a hurry. And Wells hit Barrett in his right shoulder as he came by. Check that, the backside. Lawrence scored the third run. Here comes the tying run. Kind of in the left side. He hits Barrett. And we're going to have a change behind the plate for the Expos. Brian Schneider will come in. And how important now were the two strikeouts by Kelvin Escobar in the top of the night when the Expos loaded them up with one out. A new pitcher, Matt Hurgis, coming on from Montreal. Imagine, just down the beach, a swimsuit model photo shoot. And you don't have a camcorder. Fast forward to Future Shop, where we'll help you get even more out of your summer. With the latest digital DVD technology. Hey! Portable computers. Wireless communications and more, all backed by our lowest price guarantee. So before you get to the beach, get to Future Shop. You'll like what the future has in store and online. Sign up now for Hotmail Extra Storage. You'll have 10 megabytes of storage, send and receive email attachments as large as 1.5 megabytes, and your account never expires. And from June 6th to the 30th, log on to CBC ca slash world cup to play hotmail shoot and score for a chance to win ten thousand dollars cash just hit the targets in the soccer net before time runs out and you are in a chance to win ten thousand dollars hotmail extra storage live large share more if you're noticing that people are dressing better client meeting no it might be because our summer sale is now in progress which means you can get a great looking suit for 130 a sport coat for 100 and if you're looking for ties, shirts, or slacks, they're also at Big Savings. So, come on in. While you might not be the first in your office, it's probably best <clears throat> not to be the last. Well-made, well-priced, well-dressed. Moors. Sign up now for Hotmail Extra Storage. You'll have 10 megabytes of storage, send and receive email attachments as large as 1.5 megabytes, and your account never expires. And from June 6th to the 30th, log on to cbc.ca slash World Cup to play Hotmail Shoot and Score for a chance to win $10,000 cash. Just hit the targets in the soccer net before time runs out, and you are in a chance to win $10,000. Hotmail Extra Storage. Live large, share more. Well, Vladimir Guerrero had a chance to pick Vernon Wells at the plate. That was close, that throw. If that throw would have been on the money, it would have been a very close play at the plate, but the ball sailed up the line. And Stewart does not close the deal. He was the victim of the error by Mordecai that extended the inning. Mordecai fields that easy ground ball, and this game is over. The Blue Jays taking full advantage with three in the ninth, and they can win it here. Again, Mordecai coming on to replace Jose Bidro, who felt a slight knee twinge after the fifth inning. And so he was removed from the game. Mordecai, a veteran utility infielder, making a critical error. This is a bouncing ball, a routine ground ball to Mordecai. And he just had it go off the heel of his glove, not able to get Wells at first base. Wells 
then stole second base, and that was a big stolen base because he got in a scoring position, was able to score the tying run on the Lopez single to right. Dave Bird, the batter, one for two, with the base on balls, and a foul down the first baseline. And Chris, two errors in the inning for the Expos, the one by Mordecai, and the throwing error by Vladimir Guerrero, allowing Lopez to go to third base, and that could be a pivotal 90 feet. If we see an infield hit or a sharp base hit to the outfield, it also brings into the play the wild pitch or the pass ball. Guerrero has nine outfield assists, second in the National League, but he also has six errors. One, two, foul back by Bird. In fact, Guerrero has the lowest fielding percentage of any right fielder in the National League because of those errors. So a very strong arm, probably the strongest in the league, maybe the strongest in all of baseball, but a little erratic at times. Well, Wells with good speed. When that ball was hit to Guerrero, I kind of anticipated a game ending out at the plate. Well, I, I actually thought that Wells, with two outs, was, had so much speed and was running at the crack of the bat that he would score easily. Normally he would. Guerrero made that close. I mean, that ball got in here like a laser. And then again, if it was right on the plate, on the money, I think Wells is out. Michael Barrett. Out. And now the count full as Burgess misses outside. Well, Masato Yoshi must be wondering what the bullpen has against him. They squandered a four-run Yoshi lead in his last start, and this one looked like money in the bank in Yoshi's first win since mid-April, but not to be. And now Berg is aboard. Second straight time that he has walked. And now he'll leave it up to... Tom Wilson, who came in behind home plate when Stewart pinch hit in the last inning for Huckabee, the starting catcher today. And then, I'll tell you, Chris, there's some pressure on Brian Schneider, the new catcher, to keep the ball in front of him. He did a nice job in that breaking ball in the dirt two pitches ago. And with that runner at third, the winning run at third base, he has to make sure he blocks the ball. Purgis likes to work down in the strike zone with that breaking ball. So now Tom Wilson takes center stage, and he has really been struggling of late. Last night, 0 for 4 is the designated hitter with a couple of strikeouts. He has fanned seven of his last 15 at-bats and 10 times in his last 20. So uh, after a terrific May for Wilson, he has hit on hard times, but could change that with this at -bat. And that misses outside from Hurgis. So Felipe Lopez, the base runner at third, a pair of RBIs for the Blue Jays shortstop. Berg is the runner at first. Wilson, the batter. Jose Cruz Jr. is next. Blue Jays trying to beat the Montreal Expos for the first time in their fifth game of interleague play this year. Fifth meeting with the Montreal Expos. They were swept two weekends ago in Montreal. Montreal winning last night two to one. ahead of Wilson, one and two. Tom Wilson has had a lot of good at-bats this season for the Blue Jays, ones in which he's really battled the pitcher. And now he's battling her, just trying to score Lopez from third base with the game winner. Blue Jays with one in the seventh.
top of this, the home plate umpire, he's saying that Wilson is out because he swung at the pitch, and then it's a dead ball when it hit Wilson in the arm. So that's the third out of the inning. Wilson conferred with the umpire, then took off to first as if it was a third strike that had gotten by the catcher. Well, he did the right thing, thinking that he could run to first base, but Welke is right with this decision. Once the ball hits the batter, it's a dead ball. You cannot advance. You cannot run to first base. So a strange ending to the ninth inning. Let's take another look at the third out. Fastball running in hard on Wilson, but watch him. He swings at the ball, so that's third strike. And once it hits him, it's a dead ball. Watch where this catches him right on the elbow, and then it goes off of Barrett. It catches Wilson on the right elbow, then hits Barrett and is deflected towards the Montreal Expo dugout. It's the third strike in the inning and the third out. But the Blue Jays score three runs, and they tie it 4-4. We head to extra innings here at Sky Dome. Share, your company shares a single pool of minutes, so there's less unused airtime, fewer extra charges. It's a whole new business day from Rogers AT&T. Imagine. Stuart Little has a new friend. Whoa! He's going to be staying with us for a while. What do you think this is, a halfway house? Now, party's over. She's been kidnapped. Margot's missing. Do yourself a favor. Buy a parakeet and forget her. And to get her back, he's teaming up. We're going to find her. With an old rival. That's fiasco written all over us. Stuart Little 2. Margolo? In Cam. Oh, okay, I'll wait. In theaters July 19th. Canadian forces landed here on June the 6th, 1944. In the spirit of the local people, the Canadians have never left. The Juno Beach Center will preserve the memory forever of Canadians who fought and died for freedom. Well, both catchers for the Expo shaken up in that wild ninth inning. Michael Barrett out of the game, and Brian Schneider, who came in, gets nicked after Tom Wilson got clipped. It looked like it got, well, it got Wilson on his right elbow. Then it is Schneider. And this is a discussion between the manager for the Blue Jays, Carlos Tosca, and home plate umpire Bill Welke on that last unusual play. First pitch hitting Jose Macias and Wells drifting over for the first out of the 10th inning. So the Blue Jays score three on two singles, two walks, and an error in the ninth to tie this game. And again, go back to the top of the ninth when Kelvin Escobar got into trouble and then salvaged this ball game for the Blue Jays by working out of trouble. That's a very good point. He loaded the bases with one out after hitting a batter with one out. Fernando Tatis and Galarraga singled, and Cabrera followed that with a single to load the bases. feels worse than Mike Mordecai right now. Yeah, this is a game that the Expos should have already won. Mike Mordecai booting a ground ball with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning to extend the inning, and the Blue Jays taking advantage of it. So credit the Blue Jays for battling back. Now they're going to try to win it in extra innings. Mordecai came into the ball game in place of starter Jose Vidro, who left with an injury to his knee, legging out an infield hit. Back in the fifth inning. 
at the top of the show, John, you talked about a mental error last night, and it bit the Blue Jays. And here tonight, it was a, a physical error, but it's amazing how sometimes just the simplest mistakes are the costliest. And if the Expos are going to make a run in the National League East, they're going to have to overcome those mistakes. They're going to have to show some resiliency in these close games. They played well, but not as well as their manager expects them to. A lot, they've surprised a lot of people in baseball this year, but Frank Robinson said a couple of weeks ago, and he said again last night, that this team is, is better than they've shown. They can make improvements in several areas. The fielding has been a trouble spot for Montreal, 14th in the National League. Sixth best offense, seventh in pitching ERA, but 14th defensively. And Mordecai didn't help the cause here today. Strikeout for Kelvin Escobar. Third strikeout for Escobar against the three of the last four batters that he has faced, and they've all come on that splitter. Working down in this, in this one to Mordecai, and you see him swing a little bit early over the top of that pitch. So a two out, and here's Vladimir Guerrero. Change the picture of the game very quickly once again. A solo home run in the second, put the Expos on the board. They got a couple more home runs to take a 4 nothing lead. <laughs> we just got another glimpse of a home run swing. Yeah, that was a big swing, and he pulled his head off of that a little bit. When you pull your head, your eyes don't track the ball a little bit. Look at that big <laughs> I think he was trying to put him ahead right again right here. At 26, fourth on the all-time expo home run list. The ground ball sees its way through the infield. Second hit of the game for Guerrero. It's the sixth multi-hit game in the last nine for the big right fielder. One of the few times he doesn't hit the ball right on the button. The ball actually broke the bat of Guerrero, but he is so strong, and he's still able to muscle the ball just through the hole between the shortstop and the second baseman, and then up the middle in the center field. And watch for him to run. He has 16 stolen bases, has been caught nine times. That's not a good percentage, but this is a situation where you'd like to see the, your big right fielder steal a base, get in a scoring position. You take advantage of every scoring opportunity that you have in extra innings. 37 stolen bases last year, O'Leary at the plate, and this foul ball will also reach the stands. Once again, if you were tuning in for the 7 o'clock start in the East and the replay of the third place game between Turkey and South Korea, it will follow the conclusion of this game. And for fans out West, you'll see it at 7 o'clock local. Here we're into extra innings. Top of the 10th, two out. Team tied at four. Vladimir Guerrero, the base runner, and an old one comes to Troy O'Leary looking for his first hit of the night.
to O'Leary, a fastball low and away, and look at Wilson get rid of it quickly, right on the money. Very close at second base. Wow. Lopez thought he had him. Watch the pop-up slide of Guerrero. He goes in very hard to second base and pops up. Frank Robinson's actually told his players that he liked to see them just slide into second base and stay low because he feels that when you pop up, you give the infielder a chance to tag you higher on a high throw. And also lets the umpire, it at least appears that he's out sometimes. The throw beats the runner. Now with the 2-1 count on O'Leary, they're going to walk O'Leary intentionally with first base open. Put the left-hander on base and pitch to Fernando Tatis, who has been tough on Blue Jay pitching this season. Guerrero with his 18th home run early in this game and now his 17th stolen base puts the go ahead run at second with two out in the 10th. The Expos don't have a, a lot of speed on their roster but Frank Robinson feels that they can take advantage of opportunities as Guerrero did in this inning. Now Guerrero runs well but he'd like to see them get bigger leads slide a little bit lower into the bases and not be afraid to get picked off. Here's Tatis with 12 RBIs in his last 13 games riding a six game hit streak. And he has hurt the Blue Jays in the first four meetings between these two ball clubs. Had a three run home run a couple of weeks ago. Actually two weeks ago today uh, that broke a 3-3 tie against Esteban Loaiza. And he had the game winner last night against Roy Halladay. Seven RBIs against Toronto. And a one on one count here in the 10th. Escobar gets ahead, one and two. was worried about an injury to his right fielder, but he's a guy that loves to play flat out. And now going to third, but a swing and a miss. And the inning is over. So again, Escobar works his way out of trouble. And we head to the bottom of the tenth in Toronto. Now. Happy birthday, Canada! Ta-da! It's the 2002 Canada Day coin. Our new 25-cent coin from the Royal Canadian Mint. Designed by Judith Chartier. From Quebec. Bonjour. Look for it. Collect it. Celebrate it. It's a gift for all of Canada. Yeah. Oh, boy, birthday cake. Where's the cake? Oh. <laughs> Was there cake? You can't do business like that. We screw up, we make trouble, this is what happened. Bottom of the 10th inning. If you joined us late, the Expos led 4-0. Three home runs in the game. Macias, Guerrero, and a two-run shot by Michael Barrett made it 4-0. Blue Jays with one in the seventh, and then a three-run ninth inning. Helped along by a Mike Mordecai error. And now the Blue Jays looking to win it. In the bottom of the tenth, Cruz, Hinsky, and Mondesi. This is the first extra inning ball game that the Blue Jays have played at home this year. They've played six on the road, and they've only won two of those six games. This 
would mark the first come from behind victory after the eighth inning for the Blue Jays this year. They have not won a game. They're 0-38 when trailing after eight this season. Well, it looked unlikely the way things have developed, and here they are with four runs on six hits in this game. The offense had really been held in check through the first two games of this series until the ninth inning here today. Two one hit in the air. Macias and Guerrero converging, and it will be the center fielder with the first out of the Blue Jay 10. Bring Eric Hinsky up a couple of hits today. A strikeout victim to start the ninth when it looked like the Blue Jays were running out of outs. to begin this season for the Montreal Expos. He came over in the offseason from the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's a valuable leave, reliever for the Dodgers. And it's been somewhat of a bullpen by committee through this season for Montreal. Again, Atlanta has won today. 2-1 over Boston. So the Expos need this to stay within six and a half of the Braves. And Hinsky falls behind one and two. Set with striking out to lead off the ninth, but the Blue Jays rallied for three to tie it, and he got another chance to win it in the tenth. Well, Matt Hurgis is the pitcher, and he throws a high fastball above the belt, right down the middle of the plate. You see the reaction from Hurgis. He knew he's hoping somehow this ball stays in the ballpark. Look at the focus from Hinsky. And right there, he's saying, come on, get out of here. Game winner. The Expo pen and their defense lets them down this afternoon as Montreal squanders a 4-0 lead 